presentations today, uh, but I'm going to do my sample lesson that I had uh, submitted uh, to the Ethnic Studies Model Curriculum Committee. Uh, it will, it's a sample lesson for the Asian American Pacific Islander studies uh, that can or may be included in future uh, American social science or, or the history framework uh, as a lesson. So uh, please keep your mind, uh, be open-minded. This is a recommendation and a sample lesson. Uh, you are able to change anything you like or add to it. Uh, and I'm sure maybe you might have heard some of these uh, already from other presenters. Uh, but uh, let's see, let me go ahead with mine. So the theme is the strengths of the Koreans uh, united for, for the Korean independence movement. And the discipline area is Asian American Pacific Islander studies. Um, and it has the, the ethnic studies values and principles alignment. And it's aligned to the uh, history, social science, content standards, as well as literacy and so on. Okay, um, so I think, I'm not sure if any other presenters uh, gave you a quick fact sheet about the Korean independence movement, but uh, this actually happened uh, during the colonial period uh, between 1910 to 1945 when the Japanese uh, occupied Korea. Uh, and there were so many, uh, during that time, as you know, uh, Japanese uh, took over so much. So Koreans pretty much had lost their freedom. So they had to, for example, change their uh, names to Japanese style surnames. Um, they had to study Japanese uh, and they also had to work as uh, ununiformed uh, soldiers or uniformed soldiers uh, to fight for Japan. So Koreans are very persistent and they definitely fought uh, against the Japanese uh, so that they can regain their independence. So my lessons kind of show you that, you know, um, even though these independence movement were in Korea as well as China and Russia, but I will be focusing on what happened in the United States very briefly, okay? So in March uh, 1919, Korean leaders actually announced the Declaration of Independence. So I'm, what I'm focusing is before this time. Uh, so students and you know, ordinary people, they were all outside um, and they were demonstrating, they were protesting, and they were ensuring that they have 100% independence from Japan, okay? Uh, and then this movement also led to Koreans resisting in Manchuria, in Siberia, in US, in Europe, and even in Japan. Okay, so, um, and after that, Koreans were uh, organizing their own government uh, in Seoul, as well as other provinces. And this is just short history, so I'm going to skip some because I think I have less time now. Uh, so Koreans also carried um, arms uh, and they were struggling uh, to, uh, be completely independent of Japan. And these uh, things led to um, independence army unit, okay, uh, which actually had the arms to fight against uh, the Japanese troops and so on. Okay. So just to give you some more facts, uh, in 1940, uh, Korea organized the Korean Liberation Army in Chongqing, okay, and in Manchuria in China, uh, and they de declared war against Japan, okay, uh, and some young Koreans received special training from a special military unit, unit of the United States. 
So that's when the US really stepped in to train the young Koreans to fight against uh, the Japanese. Okay. In 1945, uh, South Korea finally had the liberation uh, as a result of Japan's uh, surrender in the Pacific War. So uh, that's when the US and Soviet troops were deployed to the south and north of the 38th parallel. And that's when uh, the South and North Korea uh, became divided. But here's a picture of the leaders of Korea then. So uh, some facts and lesson overview. Um, I want to mention President Woodrow Wilson uh, and his efforts to make peace in Europe uh, during the Korean War. And what he wrote and what he spoke, especially in Wilson's uh, 14 points, which was a very famous speech um, and uh, resolution. Uh, this assisted the uh, Koreans in China, Japan, Hawaii, Korea, uh, and the United States to uh, form uh, form an organization to uh, follow uh, what he had uh, inspired through that 14 points. So it's a famous speech before Congress uh, in 1918, near the end of the First World War, uh, President Wilson laid down 14 points. So these 14 points are very important for several reasons. First of all, they, it translated many of the principles of American domestic reform um, into foreign pol policy. Uh, it also became the basis for German surrender uh, and the only criteria uh, by which, um, I'm gonna try to move this up, by, oops, by which to judge the peace treaty. And this also uh, became the basis uh, for the foreign policy. Oh, cannot see what of many countries that did not have anything in place uh, for a policy, a government policy. So by March of 1919, uh, once again, thousands of Korean nationalists organized public demonstrations against the Japanese rule. Okay, there were protests uh, where the Korean Declaration of Independence was read and over 2 million Koreans uh, participated in over 1,500 public demonstrations um, that lasted for weeks. Uh, one of the prominent Korean nationalists around the world uh, included Sung Man Ri. I think um, uh, Mr. Kim just mentioned him too. He's very important. He actually com completed his degrees at George Washington University, Harvard, Princeton, and later became the first president of South Korea. Uh, along with him, there was Philip uh, Jason on, uh, uh, J, uh, Jason and Gu Kim, and they sparked the March 1st movement uh, that intens intensified uh, demonstrations. So these led the Japanese forces to kill over 7,000 people and arrest at least 40,000. However, um, Korean nationalists, nationalists um, such as Sung Man Ri and his uh, colleagues uh, fought back, okay? Uh, and had influence on the Korean, especially the young Korean, uh, Koreans. One example was a Korean, a young Korean woman, uh, Yu Kwan Su. Well, I wanted to mention her, although she didn't study in America, uh, but you know, I was, I studied in Korea until I was, in fourth grade and uh, she was one of my heroines. And I just, I, you know, I read about her. I read so many books about her and even up until now, I just uh, respect her so much um, for doing what she did. She was one of those um, young students who was tortured and beaten 
until she died. Uh, and she was killed in 1920 uh, for marching in the streets of Seoul, Korea, you know, shouting, Manse, you know, long live Korea. But however, you know, even though they thought they were getting their independence, Japanese uh, still uh, soldiers were still in Korea. And she was um, actually uh, imprisoned and uh, eventually died uh, because of all the things that she had to suffer, um, all the tortures that she had to endure in prison. Uh, she has a famous remark. It's, uh, even if my fingernails are torn out, my nose and ears ripped apart, and my legs and arms are crushed, this physical pain does not compare to the pain of losing my nation. My only remorse is not being able to do more than dedicating my life to my country. And this inspired uh, young Koreans for generations. That also includes me. Uh, she actually inspired me to become a Korean patriot. Um, so the Korean independence movement achieved uh, independence of Korea from Japan. And we call this day Gwangbokjeol uh, or Restoration of Light Day. Okay, the National Liberation Day of Korea is a holiday celebrated on August 15th uh, annually. And it's uh, one common, uh, one of the common holidays that both South and North Korea uh, celebrate. So it comm commemorates victory over Japan Day. Um, when at the end of World War II, the US and Soviet forces helped end 35 years of Japanese occupation and rule of Korea. So this lesson uh, that I wrote um, uses videos, uh, books, online articles to illustrate how the Korean nationalists, including those who studied in America you were united to achieve, to help achieve the Korean independence uh, from Japan. And these are some of the key terms and concepts. A Korean nationalism, inspiration, identity, uh, voice, unity, perseverance, influential. So if you're a teacher wanting to teach this lesson, uh, I'm giving you suggestions. Let me just turn that on. Sorry, I'm working at school and the uh, phones are ringing. <laughs> okay, so lesson objectives for those teachers. Okay, so lesson objectives. So identify the influence of Woodrow Wilson and the Korean nationalists that helped to lead the Korean independence from Japan. Uh, second one is to research, discuss, and elaborate uh, on the 14 points, uh, Woodrow Wilson's 14 points that actually gave him a Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, third uh, objective is to have the students to research, write, discuss, and create presentations about the Korean nationalists, uh, such as Sung Man Ri. Some essential questions to include in your lessons. Uh, how did Woodrow Wilson's 14 points influence the Korean independence movements that changed South Korea's history. Uh, did it really help? How did it influence it? Why is it important to learn about the Korean nationalists who studied in the USA? Um, their thinking has changed. Uh, you know, we call it westernized, but did it help? Uh, what is patriotism? And how did the Korean nationalists 
influence the people of Korea. Okay, and you can also have the students generate more questions. So um, these are some of the ideas of a lesson. Okay, so first you can tell students about what they're going to learn and how the USA influenced the Korean independence movement. There is a reading that I can uh, provide to you in a lesson plan. Um, or you can look it up about Korean in independence movement, especially with the uh, USA's influence. Okay, you can present some basic information about the occupation of Korea by Japan in the 1900s. Uh, you can have them read chapter two of uh, the Korean American history. Um, and also there's a book called uh, History on Korean War. Okay, and, and, and I think this is how I started. Uh, I had to review this book for the Korean Education Council. And the next thing was, hey, uh, Mrs. Park, can you come up with a lesson plan? <laughs> so I did. Okay, so, um, and as students read the chapter, give them an annotation chart. And I'm not sure if you are familiar, uh, but an annotation chart looks something like this. Okay, so you use symbols, uh, comments, questions, responses, uh, you know, uh, uh, some uh, open-ended questions, um, you know, main points, uh, ideas, statements that you agree with, disagree with, you know, shocking statements or, you know, um, that is an annotation chart. Um, and I can give you my lesson plan through Mrs. Kim so you can actually use it. So the fourth thing that you can do with your students is to discuss about the March uh, 1st movement. Okay, so March 1st movement and the 14 points, okay, um, outlining the right of national self-determination, uh, which was proclaimed by President uh, Woodrow Wilson. And th this kind of information can be also uh, found in Wikipedia, so uh, you don't have to memorize this, okay? Um, and then have a deeper con uh, discussion with the students about the Japanese occupation in Korea and the Korean nationalists in America, uh, such as uh, Seungman Ri, okay? And um, what did he do that made, uh, that was significant uh, to help the Korea to be liberated from Japan? And not only that, but start anew uh, with a new government. Uh, and as you know, Sung Man Ri later became uh, the first president of Korea, okay? But he was a highly influential um, leader. So he was hiding his hostility towards Jap Japanese. He actually worked in uh, YMCA. He was a high school principal. Uh, and he was living in Hawaii. Uh, and then he, there he quietly uh, with his colleagues um, became a spokesman for Korean independence. Uh, and then in 1919, he was elected uh, as a president. Okay. Um, then you can have your students do a KWL exercise uh, by uh, asking them, what do you know about how U.S. influenced the Korean independence movement? Uh, what you want to know about this topic? And then uh, after your lesson, they can complete what they learned. Okay, so this is a suggestion. And if you're teaching uh, elementary, you can always modify. Maybe you might want to just pick one to, uh, topic like uh, a famous Korean American leader, Sing Man Ri, okay? Um, you can show clips from uh, Korean movies uh, such as um, Hang Ei, which is uh, Spirit of Korea. And this movie is actually about uh, that 
student uh, who was jailed, uh, Yu Guan's son, and Yun Bong Gi. I, I, I actually watched this at a theater, and it was a great movie. Uh, but it's uh, available on YouTube for free for you, okay? So you can look this up. It's called uh, Resistance or Hang Ui, um, or um, Spirit of Korea. Okay, so you can, if, if you have high school students, you can actually have your students watch clips of this or watch it as a as weekend homework, um, then assigned them to create a short eye movie or a skit about what you may do uh, as a student for an independent movement, okay? Uh, with um, a group of students, with group of classmates. You can also have them write a theme song for the presentation. Uh, when you watch this movie, you will notice many different uh, types of music playing, uh, so they can add their own music to it uh, if uh, it's a high school student. Uh, think, pair, share. Um, you know, you can do this activity as reflection or assessment of the lesson. So, um, you know, what was the problem? Why did the Korean nationalists sacrifice their lives for the Korean indep independence? What would you have done as students during that era? I'm sure your students cannot imagine, okay? That's why, you know, watching a movie uh, like that movie is, is helpful uh, so that they kind of can understand what was going on uh, during that era. Um, and then students can have time to think about it individually, and then they can work in pairs uh, to solve the problem, which is, you know, what would you have done um, and share their ideas. They can do it as, you know, an assessment by creating a chart, a PowerPoint or an iMovie uh, to present to the class. They can also do project-based learning activities. They can compare and contrast uh, Korean independence movement with American or Mexican independence movement. Um, they can also compare uh, Yu Gan Soon with maybe Joan of Arc, uh, something like that. Okay, what else can you add? You know, uh, just let me know uh, um, when we have question and answer time. Uh, if you want to know more about what is project-based learning, uh, you can also, there is a link also um, where you can find out more. Uh, it's a wonderful theme, thematic uh, unit, um, project-based learning uh, for students to use or you can use it with your students. I also wanted to, um, those of you who love Korean drama, you know, I also watched this. Uh, this was in, uh, I think, two years ago. Um, it was very popular uh, movie. It was called Mr. Sunshine. Uh, and this is about, this Korean drama was about young students and young Koreans during the um, uh, independence movement era. Uh, it actually shows a very short clip about uh, Sung Man Ri where this main actor goes to America and he, he meets the young Sung Man, Sung Man Ri uh, in America. So um, that's also a great drama uh, to show little clips of, you know, some of the fights and some of the independence movements. Um, in a fun way. Okay, so I tried to finish it really early, uh, but I think I finished too early. <laughs> uh, is there any question 